Hello, so today I'm doing something a little different and posting my first ever Twitch stream because I'm gonna be a streamer now. That's right, I'm a gamer now, just kidding. But my partner has a Twitch account and streams all the time and I thought it'd be fun to give it a try. So if you're new into games like I am, you might enjoy this and I probably will do a few more because I fell in love with Zelda during the pandemic and have started to fall in love with gaming in general. So here's my first ever Twitch stream. If you enjoy it, please give it a like. Also, go check out Jeremy's Twitch page. Give him some love. He's working to get towards 50 followers. He's almost there. And so if you have a Twitch account, I'll link his below. Just give him a follow. And that's it. So enjoy. Hey, you might be wondering, why is this camera positioned below my forehead? And that's because my, <laughs> my partner, Aveda, is taking over the stream today. That is why the camera is positioned strange, because she is three feet tall. Levels are ready, she's playing Zelda, and I'm going to have a bath. So here is my wonderful partner, Aveda. Hello everybody, I'm very excited to play Zelda and I start from scratch. <laughs> I've already played it a lot, but I want to start it over because I love it. It's my favorite game right now because it's the only game I've ever learned how to play. Let's go. Oh yes, I forgot this is quite a beginning situation. Yeah. Okay, here we go. Have fun. Yes, yes, yes. Let's do this. Okay. Wake up, Link. This brings me down memory lane. The first time I played this game, which was at the beginning of the pandemic, and I really didn't know if I liked video games or not, and this first scene I was kind of underwhelmed. I was kind of trying to rush through it. I didn't like that I had to sit through the scene. Now that I'm watching it for probably the fifth time, I love every part of it. I love, I love Link so much. I love this video game. I appreciate video games. Probably has to do something with Mr. Last Call. He may have had some influence over me during lockdown. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm a big gamer now, just for one game. Controls. Okay, so one thing I learned early on in my video gaming is that I like things backwards. Eh. So I'm trying to figure out how to do that. You'll also be very frustrated with me while I play because I will often just hit the wrong buttons. I've blown myself up many times. I think that's all I need to do for that. Okay. Here we go. If you are new to gaming and unsure, I highly suggest this game for you and probably anyone else who likes video games has already played this and beat this game because it is not a new game. So Last Call was so, oh, I don't know if I like this, generous and I think also determined for me to become someone who appreciates video games, obviously because he likes to play them and lockdown was the perfect environment for people to play video games so he actually gifted me a switch light and this game and it took me yeah i know it took me from like march when i got this set up until probably august of just daddling diddly daddling with the game until I decided I liked it. So, what else do I gotta open here? Okay. So, got my shirt, got my pants, essentials. So I will preface this stream by also saying that I played this game on my Switch Lite and not on this remote. So I'm a, I don't I don't love this feeling right now. I've only been playing at my Switch, not any other games. So if this 
stream gets posted to YouTube and I can share it from my channel, I would love the people that know me have been watching my videos to maybe suggest other games they m might think I might like. I don't like fighting games. I don't like combat games, shooting games. I don't know all the wor like different what they're supposed to be called, but that's what I don't like. And I'll tell you something. Today, we just got back from watching Suicide Squad in theaters. And I didn't see the first one because I didn't think I'd like it. And here we go, another cutscene. Um, my eyes were closed 80% of the time. It was very intensely, disgustingly bloody. But I can appreciate the art. I appreciated the acting and the director and just the digital effects are pretty amazing but a lot of heads blowing up and bodies being ripped in half and things like that it's just not my cup of tea look at this place isn't this beautiful wouldn't you like to live here this is what bc looked like before global warming now we're on fire every summer Branch. <laughs> Climbing up the rocks to get these mushrooms. Gotta get the mushrooms. Speaking of food, today I had my first ever Big Mac. And I just came to that realization last night. We were over at a friend's house talking about being hungry ooh, ooh, no I can't catch a squirrel and I was thinking I wanted to go get McDonald's after and I might go to I think we all get you fall into your pattern my go-to McDonald's meal has always been the two cheeseburger meal because I just love the cheeseburger I don't get McDonald's often but that's what I've been getting since I was a kid and so I realized I'd never had a Big Mac in my life and I like to live my life fully without any regrets and I don't want to be on my deathbed someday feeling sad that I never tried that I limited my options and my experiences in life so I went to McDonald's today before the movie and we got Big Macs it was alright better than a cheeseburger better than the cheeseburger I think but um, Mr. Last Call showed me a neat little trick where you order a hamburger dressed as a Big Mac and you get all the sauce in the dressing but you don't have that extra stupid bit of bread in the middle you know so there's a tip for all of you Big Mac lovers that just feel like that extra piece is just a little too much my McDonald's hankering has now been cured for another five years though that not that good. A temple there. I gotta go there. The city's in decline. The sneaky old man's in disguise trying to trick me. But I'm gonna steal his torch. Yep, got that. To set things on fire. Yep, giving me lots and lots of tips. Oh, what's this? Oh, he's a funny guy. Okay, so what I want to do is visit all the shrines. I know that. I need to get all my powers. Do you think I'm going to be able to get all, beat all four shrines to get my powers during this one stream? Oh, I got a rupee. We'll see. Oh yeah, I'm okay. I'm gonna tell you guys a story about my first experience playing this game. So I didn't know to do any of the things I'm doing now because I've been playing for so long, and I thought this was just gonna be a fun exploring game where maybe I just hunt animals and have a camp. I like I didn't even know it. Oh. And this chick's always up in my ear, interrupting me. Yeah, 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 yeah. Anyway. 
and I'm just wandering through the forest, not following any of the instructions that are being given to me right now, and just wanted to uh, try and forage for food and stuff like that. And then one of these monsters came out. And this was like 10 minutes into the game, and it killed me because I didn't know what to do and I didn't have a weapon or anything. And I put my switch down, and I just told Jeremy, like, I was just like, F this s-h-i-t you know what i'm saying i was like i hate video games i don't like it why did that guy kill me i was mad that he killed me i think i put my switch down i didn't play it again for like two months i was like why did you make me learn this stupid game or make me play this oh he's still there Fuck. okay okay Oh yeah, hold on, I have weapons. <laughs> oh, look at me. Yeah, you know what? Coming for you, bro. Bet you didn't see that coming. Oh, so, yeah, the first time I played this, I died right away, and I was really upset about it, and I felt betrayed by my partner because I thought he was setting me up with a really fun game, and it turned out uh, everybody was trying to murder me. But now I've had a taste of blood, and can't stop. Just want to keep going back to the beginning and massacring every little beady-eyed monster that tried to get me the first time. I'm not afraid of no monsters. You can come at me. Get a kick, get a kick, get a kick. Yeah. That's right. And I want your club, buddy. I want your club. Uh, coming for you. No time for rest. Uh, there we go. What do I get? What? What the? Make you into dust. Now give me all your goods. Guts. Yeah, I'm a changed person since the beginning of lockdown. <laughs> and I blame it fully on my love. Because now I eat dairy, play video games, <sighs> and I've been desensitized to violence. <sighs> Looky here. What? Do I not already have those? Well worn trousers. Those ones are better. Okay. Yellow dot, yellow dot. Okay. Little arrow needs to point at little dot. I'm embarrassed to tell you how long it took me to figure out all these very obvious oop clues. What can I pick up? What are you what are you telling me to oh the thing? Um, it's a really pretty straightforward game, and it took me a really long time to to understand even the most basic things that it, my tools that I have that I can utilize to play better. All right, I see a bunch of dynamite down there. Do I have any rocks I can roll around? Hmm. Oh, over there. See that rock over there? That's what I'm gonna do. Talking about that rock. I'm gonna roll it onto the dynamite and I'm gonna blow up all the guys. And last time when I was first learning this game, I didn't think that that was a good way to go about things. I was like, oh, you're being like a little biatch. You just gotta get in there and battle. And it's like, no, it's called strategy, you idiot. I definitely at the beginning of this game, the first time, broke all my weapons trying to do the same things over and over again. Okay. Oh my god. Yep. Here it goes. <laughs> and that's how you do it, folks. Oh no! I almost jumped off of there. That would have not been good. The only downside of blowing up your opponent into smithereens is that y you don't get their guts. And if that's not a life lesson and worth watching this stream, I don't know what is. So you're welcome. Yep. I did it. I did it. I did it. And that's how it's done, folks. It's very exciting stuff here.
if you are watching and want to say hello or ask me extremely personal life questions, go right ahead. Let's have a conversation. I am an open book. Ask me anything you want about Last Call. I'm happy to share it. <laughs> but only about him, not about me. Just kidding. So, I'm gonna climb up that tower. I could play this game on repeat for the rest of my life. I think that might be a personality defect that I have. Where I don't require new things. I mean... The year of lockdown for me was a year of new experiences, as I'm sure it was for everybody, but let's talk about the good ones. New experiences for me is cooking more. I don't like doing it, but I'm slowly learning. Playing video games, obviously. Trying to learn the guitar. Here we go, we got a map. controller is going crazy with the vibrations this technology I tell you like honestly the last time I played serious video games was Nintendo 64 so if you're like me there's still hope for you to be a nerd <laughs> like me all right, fine, slate did it, been there, done that, now, oh man, you tell me, oh no, wait, okay, everyone calm down, I know I gotta go over there, let's zoom in, boop, okay, I got one, I feel like there's one, oh, there you go, boop, love it, there's one down here somewhere. Okay, I can't miss that one, like, honestly. And then where's the other one? That one seems a little far away. Look on my map. Yeah, no. One, two, there's four more. Two more, and they're not, not on the map, you know what I mean? Oh, you are all going to be very shocked that I've played this game for a long time, because I still play like I'm a newbie but it keeps it fun for me one two I got those two three and then they went down here okay let's go so can I fast travel off of this thing or do I have to climb down it you can't travel from here what oh man I gotta climb down climb down Always finding the loopholes. Yeah. She's making her way downtown. Down to the bottom. Okay, this guy. He's got a little bit of an obsession with me, you know what I mean? Oh, it's a tower. It's tall. It's hard to get up and down. I got a tool for you. See that thing I flew on? I'm gonna let you have it. Uh, but you gotta do some errands for me. You gotta look over at that big scary castle for a minute because it is the headquarters of our community anxiety and if you destroy it we'll all be functioning adults got it got it thank you for reminding me that if i jump off a cliff i will die oh, and i want a paraglider hand it over old man actually you know what i take that back that was rude i think in our day and age society has taught us that we as young people not to respect 
our wise elders and it's not good so thank you sir thank you for imparting your wise words and directing me on my mission I will not fail you going over to that shrine I'm curious to know how many gamers out there play with inverted controllers like am I a, an anomaly is it a weird thing to do because obviously they have it as an option and immediately once I started playing I was like no this does not work for me this is so backwards so do I have a brain problem or is this a very common like you're right hand you're left handed you're inverted you're not inverted please share in the comment section here I go here I go Got that magnesis, baby. So I'm gonna move that door and go down in the ladder. Whoa! Well, she's fine. So if you've never played Zelda before, you might be impressed by this. But if you have played Zelda before, you're probably impressed by my lack of skill. <laughs> Either way, you're impressed. And that's what we're here for. Now I think... Yeah, I got that block. And I'm gonna bring it over this way. And I'm gonna... Put it there. And I'm gonna pull this block out. And... Here we go, here we go, my first bad guy coming at you. I'm not scared, I'm not scared, I got a club. Ugh. Oh god. <sighs> well, Mr. Last Call is indisposed in the bathtub. Feel free to ask me any questions you want about him. <laughs> uh, let me spill the beans. I don't need to go down that ladder. I need to go over this way, and then I use my special power. And I push the door around. One thing I do, well, there's a million things. There's a lot of reasons why I love this game so much. Another one of them is these shrines that you have to go in and essentially solve puzzles. It's my favorite part. I like like the non-intense. I have a uh, anxiety problem. I have a blood problem. I like in terms of I don't like seeing blood, real or fake. I have a aggressive combat problem. <laughs> I just like the chill parts of the game. So the not so chill parts I've just had to uh, deal with throughout so that I can enjoy the other parts, which is kind of like life. It's a metaphor, you know? You can't appreciate you can't appreciate summer without winter. You can't appreciate relaxing foraging in the forest without murdering a few monster dudes. Paraglider Molotov. I realize now actually that the first game that I tried on my Switch Lite was actually Animal Crossing which he was correct in suggesting that one for me first because it was it's like a baby's game sorry to any Animal Crossing fans out there but honestly it's like I played it for a while and once I built my town built my island and had all my houses on it I was and like my like, my like you get to a certain level there's nothing you can do really other than like start tearing things down and rebuilding them and like going super crazy with stocking your house with just junk and it went against everything that I believe in in terms of life like lit staying on one island forever and just stockpiling items because of your capitalist greed so I got I got tired of that game pretty quick and 
think I played it for like March, April, and I then I tried this game out, and I'm in love. Okay, where am I going? I'm going to the green, the green dot. You know what? Okay. Do I have my? Oh, I don't have my paraglider yet. Gosh darn it. Okay. You know what? I'm just coming up there, and I'm gonna kill you. Get up there. I'm gonna kill you and take your arrow. Okay, that's it. Coming down. You made me do this. You made me have to kill you and steal all your weapons. Yeah, that's right. Come on. <laughs> yeah, I want your bow. I know how to shoot it because I'm a vet. Jesus. Okay. Got an arrow. Who is still alive? Okay, you're going down. You're going down. One more shot. Oh. Yeah, that's right. All right. Okay, we got our first fun question of the chat. Our first only question so far, which is uh, spilling the beans on any awkward moments in our relationship. I mean, Mr. Last Call. Last Call. Uh, I feel like every day is a new opportunity for awkward, but we also don't. I don't know if you've gotten the, your full impression of Last Call yet, but he doesn't uh, take too many things seriously. So it's kind of hard to embarrass him or make him awkward. We we laugh. This is not a good answer at all. But we actually laugh so much and make fun of each other a lot. So I don't know how to be awkward around him because when something is awkward, that's when it's the funniest. And like we will just laugh. But probably when the pandemic first happened, we were literally dating for three weeks, maybe almost a month. And he kind of offered that I could stay at his place with, all. you must all know Bruce at this point, to, to work because I got sent home from work to work at home remotely. And I mean, moving in kind of essentially with someone you've only known a month, there's there's room for some awkward moments. I don't think when Last Call invited me to work at his house and hang out with his dog during the day, he meant move in with me full time forever. <laughs> well, it's like up to interpretation, right? Um, did I open this already? Ooh, I got a sword! Um, but over time, we just kind of realized we lived together very well and didn't want to kill each other. And we spent every day of most of 2020 together. And it was pretty great. Do I have anything to cook? Uh, not really. So yeah. Where am I going? Green, green. They say that like the lockdown added seven years to a relationship or something like that, or four years, or like one year of the lockdown equaled four years together. I wouldn't disagree with it. I think we're in a really solid place and, oh no, oh, I'm okay. I think lockdown was really hard on some people in relationships and it was great for other people and it turned out good for us and I'm very thankful for that because he's good company that's where I'm going I think that's where she's going do, 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 do. Oh. Uh, oh I have a shield too oh don't know how to use it apparently but I have one Um, I'm good at deducing things. I I'm gonna get rid of this tree branch because I deduced oop that I 
think that the sphere is going to be more helpful. And yeah, I pick up on what people are putting down. I'm a perceptive human being. I've definitely seen my fair share of doozy relationships. They're in my rear view window at this point, thankfully. But that's probably why I'm in a position I am now in a good relationship because I finally learned from all those red flags. We definitely, because even though we'd only known each other for a month, we had laid it all out there pretty clear from the beginning of like our likes, our dislikes, our future goals. Like, we got real personal real quick because neither of us wants to- Eero! Eero! Now, none of us- Neither of us wants to waste the other's time, you know what I'm saying? You gotta... At a certain age, just, uh... Okay, this guy's gonna come alive. These guys are not good. If you're just joining me, I'm playing Zelda and I'm... Got a bunch of shrines I got- Ooh, these guys will... These guys are bad. I don't have. I'm not strong enough to beat these guys right now. I'm going over to that shrine. Okay. I guess I'll go around. You know what? I would agree about the honeymoon period of a relationship. Actually, I just had a conversation with friends about this on Friday, because during the honeymoon phase, you kind of look past any red flag slash like flaw that another person might have because you're like whatever whatever I'm just I'm so into this that and the other thing and I'm so excited about meeting this person and you may have chemistry or whatever but then after I think I've had probably five failed relationships serious ones so far in my life so you start being like oh if I would have just listened to that the instinctual voice in my head that was telling me like mayday mayday I could have saved myself a lot of time so that was kind of what we did at the beginning of our when we first met is we just asked about every possible red flag the other one might perceive and neither of us was offended we were like sure yeah ask away and we really cleared up a lot of stuff from the get-go and so as we were spending more time I wasn't so worried it was a honeymoon thing cuz I don't know I, I'm gonna get all sappy and stuff but what I did do because I didn't I did make the realization though that like all the things that maybe I thought were going to be adorable for that first few months I would probably be super annoyed by in a year from now I, that's what I've learned in all my relationships all the stuff that you're like oh it's so cute they never change the toilet paper roll and oh they hate dusting it's adorable and I love folding all their clothes and then three months <laughs> a year passes and you're like they never change the toilet paper They never put away the dishes and all those cute adorable things become things that you want to smother them with their own pillow in the middle of the night so I actually made a list of all the things that I thought were adorable at the beginning really dumb things but because I knew they were like honeymoon things and I saved it on under the notes on my phone so I can refresh my mind because definitely there are things on that list now that he does that I would probably complain about had I not looked at my phone looked at the notes from 2020 and been like oh yeah I did think that was cute at one time I can't get mad at it now you see what I'm saying so past me really taught present me some valuable lessons okay I have oh my bombs okay sorry I was a little distracted there So I've gotten so far the magnesis power from one shrine. I've got my bombs over here. I can drop there. Boo. Well, I'm here. I'm just going to blow this one up too. Can't tell you how many times in this game I have blown myself up with my own bombs. Woo. Okay. Sometimes when you're like in a bad situation, you just, yeah, you think that maybe getting a puppy, that's something I did with someone thinking that that was going to 
solve some uh, issues with us and then ended up just falling in love with a dog that I had to eventually give to someone else because I couldn't take care of it on my own because of course we broke up this is fun this is like a new challenge for me playing video games and communicating oh my gosh what's happening over here now I gotta solve this puzzle I gotta, put a, I gotta get my circle bomb I gotta stick it in this thing. I'm just gonna shoot it over there and then I gotta fire it off. Boom! And then I gotta crawl down the ladder, or just jump off the side because I'm too impatient. Run over here. Would you like me to share with you? Do I just spin it? No, I wanna get the. There's a chest over there. This is what you also have to be aware of as a professional Zelda gamer, is when you're in these world these shrines there's extra little pockets that you can go to that aren't necessary but you will get extra things so there's a chest over there how do i get to the chest that ball has something to do with that okay have bombs anybody have any thoughts on this who thinks that i should just stand in front of this and see if it'll just shoot me over there Come on, let's see. Yeah! Oh my god, that's actually how that worked. See? You just gotta be open and try new things. Same thing goes for relationships. You can't enjoy those perfect soulmates if you haven't had a few absolutely catastrophic failures. And I definitely think I paid my dues. So it makes sense that I'm in a really, really healthy, happy relationship at this stage. Because I've done all the other things. I'll share with you one of the things on my list of things that I put in the honeymoon period that I was pretty sure would drive me crazy after. And it was... Um, so in this, the cutlery drawer... Um, first off, Last Call has a very um, organized kitchen. He's a great cook, loves cooking, not my strength, have no interest in it. So that's kind of his domain, which is fine. So when we first were living together and I would um, unload the dishwasher, I just threw the spoons into the cutlery drawer in the spoon section. Like I'm not a serial killer. There's like forks, knives, spoons. I just put them in the spoon location which makes sense right and then he comes in the room and he opens the drawer points out that the big spoons have to be piled in a big spoon pile and the little spoons have to be in a little spoon pile now this is something oh ooh, god run 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 oh no oh no i'm fine and uh this is something i wouldn't really preoccupy myself with in my own kitchen i would just have all the spoons and have the confidence that if I went into my spoon drawer and needed either sized spoon I would be able to visualize it and pick it up it didn't need to be in its own distinct pile anyway so he came in pointed out they needed to be in separate piles proceeded to, to stack them appropriately and let's just see which one I should go to next the red one go into the red one um, and I right immediately opened my phone and I put a note in there because at the time I was like, that is so adorable. That is so cute that he is so, because he I haven't been with someone who's so organized and so tidy and so methodical. <laughs> and yeah, it's been a year and a half. I still don't, I haven't converted to his ideologies when it comes to cutlery organization. And I can't say it really bothers me yet but it's just funny that that's something at the beginning that I was like Ugh, marry me but now it's like it's just a little neurotic and there's probably something deeper there but I am not going to parade no I'm not oh I see the shrine baby so one of the other things I really liked is that 
as I mentioned before, last call. Oh, I want these. Is into cooking and kitchen stuff, and he actually has a handwritten box of recipes. Oh yeah, I can't go through here. Whoa! I was getting distracted again. Just kidding. I'm gonna go up this way. Um, which I think I thought was adorable. Also, one of his favorite places to go shopping. Where am I going? I gotta make it over there. I gotta make it over there. I gotta that way. I gotta make it to that fire over there. Um, one of his favorite stores. Bed. Bath. And beyond. That's right. Loves that store. Used to have free coffee there before the pandemic, so I can understand that reason. But other than that, it's like one of my least favorite places to be because I just get stressed out. Okay, I don't want to eat all my good food because I'm going to get up there and cook it. really focused right now. <laughs> this part stresses me out. I'm slowly freezing to death. Oh my gosh, just die already. And this guy keeps hitting me with the arrows over there. I don't like it. Yeah, you know what? You are. And I need a weapon. Okay. Now, the strategy here is... If you get a little overwhelmed by what's going on, you can just take a breather and go and hit this, check your stock, your inventory, and just reload your weapons. We're gonna be okay. There we go, okay. Now, <sighs> I'm very stressed out because I don't know where I should be going right now. I'm gonna look at the map. I'm very close to that red dot. Okay, I'm just going for it. How do I get? Up there, I'm going that way. I'm just going. Going for it, guys. I'm going to go straight up that mountain. And guess who uh, just came out of the bath? Number one streamer of all time. And the number one in my heart. Now I have to find the bridge to get over this water. Because if you have a brain, you know that water is too cold for me to swim across. How was your bath? It was good. How was your wrestling neck injury? Bad. That's not good. We actually had a, had a cute, adorable little discussion today about the time that he takes in the bathroom. Whatever. He does have very long baths. I did notice that when we first were dating. Because, first of all, he takes baths, which is not something I'm used to seeing someone do. And they're long. They're very, very long. He's in there Give for Give me hours. this. Let's talk about baths. Oh, you just made me dump my... Oh. Dump it. Let's talk about baths for a minute. Am I in frame? Oh, my God. I'm going to die now. And I didn't save. Oh. <laughs> this is why you just did this to me. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about baths for a minute. What is a <sighs> bath, you really? You murdered me. We're talking about baths now. What are baths, really? Relaxing, contemplating, okay. letting your muscles soak. That's supposed to take a while. You're not supposed to just get in, pop out. Continue. I will say this. He did introduce me also to bath salts. Not the kind that make you eat human flesh. Just regular ones. Is that what they're called? Is that what they're called? Bath salts? And, uh, why am I not figuring this out? I'm not a bather because I don't have the patience for it. I want to get in. I want to do what I got to do. There's a lot of work that needs to be done when I'm in the shower. A lot of shaving to be done. So, I'm not there to just lay around. But, oh no. Oh no. Gently. But he prepared a bath for me. He even bought me one of those, like, bath shelf things. 
So I would put my put my switch in there. Put like I think this is gonna work. Put my switch in there. Candle, glass of water, you know, phone. And I I got I got on board. And now I will only have a bath if he makes it for me because I don't even have the effort energy. <gasps> oh my god, I did it! To pour it for myself. Who was impressed with what just happened there? Because I was talking and I did it and we all know how hard that's been for me. Alright. There's a shrine just right up here. What are you snacking? Potato chip. It's been one of those days. We had Big Macs for lunch. Popcorn as an afternoon snack at the movies. Am I? Oh, yeah, I'm still going the right way. Am I in the right place? I'm so confused. Yeah, it's right there. Oh, look at it, guys. Look at there it is. And did you see there's something in the water? There's a chest. How do I get the chest? I think the power within will explain. I get my next power. What's it gonna be? I can move magnets. I move metal with magnets. I can blow stuff up. Here we go. Oh, I have a question for you, last call. So, if you were listening to my stream in the bathroom, which you were. Oh, nice. Um, what is the thing about when we first started dating that you thought was adorable about me that now is just super annoying? What I do to annoy him is... A few things. Nice. Fair. Like I'm not gonna get a fan. Reorganize the house every almost every day. <laughs> and then when I ask you for something that you get upset every time. Oh, guys, there's a I chest. <laughs> okay. Well while he was blabbing away, I found a chest. And I'll share with you his answer. That both of hey, both of us have similar no annoyance. Problem. All right, so clearly we found each other's soulmates because things that uh, we love about each other initially are also the things that annoy e us of each other. So his answer was that I rearranged the house and l I will add, I rearranged everything but the kitchen. I'm not allowed to touch the kitchen. Because I don't cook, and he's not wrong about that. I don't care about the kitchen. We've had, I've, I've shared this part. I don't care about the kitchen. You love the kitchen. Kitchen is your domain. And then, but I arrange, rearrange every other part of the house. And by rearrange, he simply means that I, I clean, and I organize. I organize. I reorganize. And there's no, and he has no problem that I do this. He is very appreciative as far as we're both concerned. Thank you. Um, but apparently, apparently, not apparently, <laughs> remove apparently, delete. Um, what he does not enjoy or appreciate is that when he asks me later on for directions to where something might be that used to be in one spot, but now it is in a much more s like smarter, space-saving, strategic spot, that I get annoyed with him for asking me where it is. But yeah, so my rebuttal is that, yeah, everything is in such an obviously new, better, awesomer place. It's so clearly that's where it should have been the entire time that he just needs to go look in that obvious place and he'll find it. Okay, we're getting close here, friends. We're really getting close. I need to get up and over that way. So I'm going to try climbing up this shorter space here. You just intuitively, like, if you open a drawer, like, you know when you walk into a home and intuitively you know where the cutlery drawer is and you'll go to open it or where the glasses should be kept and then you go and open it and they're not there and you're like, well, where in the hell would they put something like that? That's kind of what I've done. I've made everything make sense. What is, what is this? Where am I going? This is way over there. That's far. Where else do I got to go? Is that it? 
I gotta go that way up that road probably. So here I go. <sighs> These guys, you gotta just spear them in the head. That's all you gotta do. So now I, this is my last shrine I think that I had to find and here we are. So let's go in. Get that last power. Okay, so this is my last power. Okay, here's my new power. Get ready to have your minds blown. Get it. Bam! And then I go running across. Go, 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 go. And then it will start going again. It's called stasis. See? Pretty cool. And that's my last power that I need. So let's just look around for... Yo, yeah. Okay. Look, there's a sledgehammer, and I'm going to tell you something. When you find things like this laying around in places like this, it's not by accident. I've done this before where I'm like, oh, I don't need that. I have a ton of weapons. It's there for a reason, and I'll show you why. So for this last trick, I have to get rid of this rock. Oh, there's a chest over there. I'm going to go get it. Oh, no, I'm just going to jump off the bridge and die. <laughs> We're not perfect. We're all imperfect. And it's the journey that matters. And the more adversity you have in life, the more you appreciate the other side, you know? And I gotta go back this way. Use my powers. It's gonna work. Did work. I'm a genius. Okay, I gotta definitely trade out a pot lid for a proper shield. Definitely want to do that. All right. Well, here we go to collect the prize. Learned a few lessons along the way. Oh, Jesus. Jesus. Jesus, I almost fell off the edge. Go tip. I've done that a lot. Okay. <sighs> Is anyone else's heart just pounding? It's always got me on the edge of the seat. Okay, so the next phase of this game is you have to go and find all of the divine beasts. And they're essentially these, like, mechanical giant bosses if you will that have been taken over by this evil demon dude and so you have to go through it and it's like it starts off as like the shrine like that where it's like a, it's a bunch of puzzles and then at the end there's actual boss that you have to beat and obviously throughout that journey you're picking up all the the tools that you need to beat them so there's four of them yeah here comes this guy now to give me my paraglider because i want to fly Right now, this old man has been leading me around. Keeps telling me he's going to give me his paraglider. But I have a feeling he's more than just an old man. You know what I'm saying? There's a little bit of uh, mystery involved. And I got to head to the Temple of Time. So I'm going to put a little in his directions, he was. T this is what he's telling me to do, but I just skipped through it. So I just want to let you know this is what we're doing, and I might travel back over here. I think this is gonna be faster. So I'm going to the pink, the pink mark on my map because this is called the Temple of Time, which I think is just right here. There's something in there. Can you see? I think I have to go above this guy. It's 
So the, each time I beat a shrine, I get an orb. That's what those people, those shrine guys give me at the end. You collect four orbs. You can enhance your health or your stamina. Which overall you can do throughout the game. I'm going to get a heart container so that I don't die as quickly. And you can also enhance your stamina wheel so you don't run out of stamina as often. So there's like um, so many shrines. I think there's 120 in the game that I've been playing on my own. I've gotten like 94 of them. So honestly, I'm just delaying p finishing the game and just hunting for shrines. I've beat all the divine beasts. I've got all the stuff. Built myself a house in a town. I've stashed it with weapons. There's really no reason for me not to finish the game, but I'm doing all the side quests. I'm trying to, you know, get a perfect score, at least in terms of collecting all the things that I'm supposed to collect. And that is the type A personality coming out strong. Alright. Climb up this thing. I do like that he can pretty much scale any surface with pretty much full ease. I will note that when it rains, he cannot climb. He slips. So that's one thing to consider. Here we go. <laughs> Did I make it? Get ready for a cutscene. <laughs> well so the next part of this game is to... I'm just skipping through all this. Is to find all the towers. Those tower, That first tower that I was on. It unveiled more of the map. And then, of course, with more areas to explore you get more of the shrines you get more enemies you get more diverse set of weapons and eventually you find your way to the different four like parts of the map where the divine beasts are they're all in very different locations with different climates different challenges all that so you go around opening up your map going after the the divine beasts and once you kill those beasts or conquer them you get special powers from all of those so by the time you go to the castle, which we've been looking at from afar, where Ganon is, you are just stocked with everything that you might possibly need. Like, by the end, if you've beaten enough shrines, you have, like, a ton of stamina. I have, I think, 11 hearts. 11 heart containers. You can cook up so many recipes that give you new, new heart, or new health make potions to be super stealth to be repellent to fire or lightning or electricity and all that stuff so yeah it's I love this game a lot so now I have a paraglider which means I can fly destroy Ganon so that's like the end game and then throughout this I'm going to get all these different so seek out Impa would be my next thing and she basically explains to me the divine beasts so Let's just jump out of the building and paraglide. Ooh, all of that effort. This is great because you just can zoom all around. And all those orange towers I have to go climb and light up. So yeah, I think that's where I'll leave it today. We did a lot of work. I'm hungry. And, uh, you know, going to hang out with Last Call annoy each other. Yeah, I just thought this is a good place to end, you know? I've gotten all my pat, well, the most of them, and now I'm just traveling around, conquering stuff. Okay. How was your first streaming experience? It was fun. I had a great time. And I hope everyone enjoyed it. Alright, well, that was really fun. Yeah, you had a good time? Mm-hmm. You played um, Zelda? Yep. And you know, I could do it again <laughs> if, if people are if they if the the people want it. The masses are begging. Then I I can provide. Oh. I'm happy to replay this entire game because it's the best. Are we saying goodbye now? Yes, yeah, say goodbye now. Goodbye now. Thank you. Goodbye. Bye.